woman, okay. Sakshi from Nagpur, and she wanted to know. I tried to have personal projects, so I was involved in. Uh, the woman, woman Devgade, he's also from Nagpur. He was a. This Python. Python, yeah. yeah. Python is. Here. It's Ananda Kishore Satkute. He's also from Nagpur. Just if there's an opportunity, jump on it. Don't worry about it. if it's right. going to help you five or ten years down the line. Okay. It'll be fun. So we can conclude that if three lang these languages, if you yeah, you know pick up and spoiling your weekend. No, 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 no. This is so much fun. <laughs> this is good. This is helpful. Yeah. This is helpful. Yeah. So it's worth it. Okay. Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. This is Monish here. So before starting this interview, let me say some background. So what happened? Like you know, last weekend I have delivered one webinar. To all the engineer students, and they are from uh, you know Nagpur University, which is uh, in India, and they are pursuing a graduation. So they are eager to know that like how American students prepare for their you know better placement uh, for IT industry or some other industry also, and what these guys are you know preparing during their graduation courses. So without any further ado, let's. Ask that question to directly <laughs> talented, fun-loving, and you know continuous learner that I saw because these guys are working with me from past two years. So these guys are better to you know tell you guys like what they learn during you know graduations before two years and what they feel after you know coming into industry. So I thought like this question which I have received from the students. So directly we will ask them, bombard this question to them, so that we will get some authentic answer rather than I will give that answer. <laughs> that sounds good. Huh? Yeah, sounds so, good. So guys, welcome Jonathan yeah. and Joseph. Hey. So Jonathan, Joseph, like if you guys can briefly introduce yourself, sure. so that would be good. You yeah, can, I can yeah. introduce myself. So my name is Jonathan, like Mahana said. Um, I graduated from the University of Pittsburgh, my undergraduate in 2018. And recently, I've gone back to start my master's uh, this year in 2021. I've been working in the industry for about three and a half years now, and uh, all that time with you, Mahana, so far. So that's me. Nice, yeah. And so I'm Joe. I, uh, I'm originally from Chicago, uh, but I went to the University of Pittsburgh for college. Um, I studied computer science, and I got minors in history, and music, and European studies. Um, so I, I was kind of all over the place, but computer science is my, my true passion. So I graduated in 2018 with John, same time, uh, and have been working uh, you know, together with him ever since. So, good, good, good. so you both like uh, in the same class? A couple times, yeah. A couple yeah. times, yeah. <laughs> I, I saw Joe, and I'm like, I don't know this kid. And then we got to work, I'm like, oh, that's, I know him. Good. We didn't really know until we interned together, right. so. Good, 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 right. good. So I have noted down the question. I'm just uh, quickly go through that one. Okay. Sakshi from Nagpur, and she want to know, like, you know, uh, yeah. just like if you can share your graduation journey, like, you know, what you guys prepare or there. And basically, she was asking, like, what did you prepare for your placement in IT industry? You want to go first on that one? Sure. No, that's a great question. I um, I knew when I started college that I wanted to study computer science. My dad's a mechanical engineer. He taught me a little bit about programming, and I did some in high school, so I kind of knew it was what I wanted to do. Um, so I started computer science classes my first semester of freshman year. It just kind of started from there. But um, I didn't do a lot outside of that until my sophomore year. So my second year of college, I... um. I started attending hackathons, which I know have become a lot more hackathon. Hackathon, oh, yeah. Okay. So during your college, uh, you already started that hackathon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I did a couple my sophomore year. They used to. They don't do this anymore, but they used to pay for your travel to the hackathons because they wanted more people to do them. Right. Um, so I got a free bus ride out to Philly um, nice. for Drexel University. We did one, and then I did one at. Um, Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland. So I did. We did like a couple competitions where you have 24 to 48 hours to just make whatever you'd like. You can code it out. It can be in any language that you want to do. Um, so for one of them, we made like a, a Spotify playlist generator. Kind of worked. It, it wasn't really like a finished project. You. The whole point is that you're supposed to stay up all night. Like you literally have like 24 hours straight to make something. So you get like a couple hours of sleep. You trade off so that everyone's still working. Right. And so we made um, a Spotify playlist generator that had a lot of Linkin Park songs in it because Linkin Park had a complete data set. Uh, <laughs> so we had to like <laughs> filter out Linkin Park songs. <laughs> and that's how I learned about data bias. There um, you go, there you go. But, and then I. You know, to be honest, I don't remember what we did for the other one because I didn't win. Um, but it was it was a really fun time, and it taught me kind of like what it's like to start a project on your own, what it's like to like work with a team instead of just right. doing solo projects. Um, and it was something I put on my resume, like I put that on there. And when I did interviews, they're like, "Oh, can you tell me about this?" Um, and then I got my first internship. Uh, after my sophomore year, I did a study abroad program where I interned for a PDF security company. So it was out in Prague, Czech Republic, in Europe. 
Um, and that was like my first experience. I had not a lot of technical experience going in, so I was just like learning constantly through it. And then the year after, I got my internship at the current place I work. So um, I, I ended up getting a job offer before I graduated because of that internship. So I, I had everything ready to go. Um, didn't really need to apply my senior year. It was all set up. That's a nice ooh, feeling. Ooh, That's ooh, a nice, nice feeling. Nice, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a nice yeah. feeling. What about you? Yeah. So for me, um, I wasn't super involved in a lot of the outside of the classroom, you know, events like hackathons. I only started getting involved in hackathons uh, through our workplace, right, on the other side. Okay. But for me, uh, what I tried to do was really practice my skills outside of class projects and as homework assignments, right? So it's easy to, to say, hey, look, I did this homework assignment, but everybody else has done that. Right, that's not really separating you. So what I try to do is um, I try to have personal projects. So I was involved in some extracurricular activities. Um, I wrote a scoreboard for uh, a, a game show for one of the uh, University of Pittsburgh's uh, events. So just trying to find other ways to apply my skills. And then um, once you have those basics and those hard concepts down, you can apply them to your next internship, to your job. Um, and I think just based on the way this question is asked, I think there's some either anxiety or nervousness about, I don't know if I'm prepared enough to be uh, in a position. And I don't think that, at least I can say, I don't think that's a concern anybody should have. If you've completed the curriculum and you're understanding the concepts, you will be more than prepared for at least an internship or an entry level position at a company. So I know that there is some nervousness, like I'm not gonna know everything I need to know. Um, but as long as you come in with the basics that you've learned in school and, and maybe some extracurriculars or some personal projects, you should be good to go. Mm -hmm. Good, 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 nice, nice. So you both, it seems like you both have some different, different. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. For sure. Yeah. So different experience. That's good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Because like everyone's life is uh, different, so maybe like you know, circumstances could be also different, and the exactly. situation also different. Good, good. Exactly. Yeah. Good man. And the next question, like you know, uh, the woman, woman Delgado, he is also from Nagpur. He was asking like you know, um, how to gain industry-based knowledge in student life. I think. This is the one thing. Okay. Yeah. So I think the best way to do that is again to just expand your skill set, whether it be through different trainings or different um, coding websites. So for example, I'm a big fan of Hacker Rank. Hey, um, okay, I like yeah. Hacker Rank, um, and it's it's really useful for practicing your lower level up to your advanced skills. I think that's really crucial. Um, also, getting involved with different organizations or companies, right? A lot of times, at least at Pitt, we had different career fairs where companies would come down and maybe they would host an event, like Joe said, a hackathon, or maybe some sort of on-site visit, or you know, with COVID right now it might be hard, but a virtual visit or some sort of uh, half-day seminar meeting. Mm -hmm. I think taking advantage of those opportunities is really useful because it's not just about the technical skills, it's also about understanding the corporate culture and, and how industry works and how industry is vastly different from the academic world. Definitely. Yeah, I feel like I had a strange experience with this, but I actually got um, I got some good experience out of clubs that weren't associated with computer science. I sang in college. I was in a couple of choirs, um, and so that took up like most of my time. I didn't do a lot of extracurriculars with programming, but um, one year the choir had uh, an elected position for the webmaster, so the person in charge of like the choir's website, um, and they hadn't like done anything with their website in years. They basically would just like put up announcements on there, and then they were done with it. Um, so I said, why not? I'll do it. And I was the webmaster. I ended up doing a couple of different things. Like I overhauled their buttons and like their main user interface and kind of made it look nice. It was like basic HTML at this point. Yeah. I didn't do like a lot fancy with it, but I don't think it had been updated since like 1999. So oh they really needed it. <laughs> um, but that like gave me like a really good introduction to HTML and like how like a website, how you deploy a website. Like I had to use. Um, What's the software where you put the files like through FileZilla. SSH? FileZilla. FileZilla. I had to use FileZilla to put it on. They gave me access to where the files were stored, and I understood how to deploy a website. You know, it was the most basic way to deploy it, but that was my first introduction. You had to start somewhere, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And then I did another one with a different choir I was in. Someone else led a full, like, website redesign, and the person that led it went on to work for Apple, so he really knew oh, what wow. he was doing. So okay. he, he, like, assigned out, like, you redesigned, like, this page, you code out this page, and so I had like one web page where I just, you know, they gave me a design and I just did the HTML for it, yep. and then I was done with it. But they ran that one on Python Flask, and so I didn't write the code, but I got to see what they did with Python Flask, and I was like, this is the coolest this is thing. Cool. Yeah, this <laughs> that's, is cool. that's how I knew I wanted to go into web design. So, wow. Umang, they were asking one more question that uh, did anyone help you 
regarding you know uh, to to make you familiar with the industry during your college like anyone like come and they are making familiar hey, hey how industry like we are doing now to other students right yeah. so anybody came Was, there was one professor that I had. Uh, he taught a quality assurance class. Yeah. And he, uh, a lot of professors actually, you know, remain in academia their entire life or entire careers. This is not always the case, but a lot of them will go from their undergraduate, graduate, masters, PhD, and directly back into academia. And what was nice about this professor is he was in the industry, and then he came back to teach. So he was actually teaching the things that people are using in, in everyday life. And the nice thing about that is sometimes in in any field things can be theoretical, mm -hmm. but then when you get to the industry, it's like wait, that's not, that's not actually how that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, there's a lot of examples of that. But uh, I think he was uh, a really great example of just you know, okay, maybe you know we're learning this in the textbook, but in real life we actually do it this way. So I think that was a good introduction for me at least in that oh, class. Okay, okay. Yeah. So here also like so we, I thought like we only feel that like there is some different in textbook, but when we jump into industry, there is a scenario which is different. So you guys also. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, think about a class that you take, right? You write your coding assignments, and then you just turn them in. You don't really consider testing. You don't really consider documentation. You yeah. can't do that in industry, right? That's a big no-no. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's one example I have. It, it was the same for me. I mean, I don't think I even understood like at all what happened in industry until my senior year of college, like right. the very last year. And there was that same professor. I took yeah. a couple. I think we were in that same we class. We might have been together. in the same class. Um, but I remember he had people come in from the industry. So he had people from, from our company now and other companies yep. that would come in, they'd give presentations on what they did, and we right. could ask them questions, we could say, what do you do every day? Because we had no idea right, what people did every day. we're just students at that point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then they would just talk about like what their day-to-day -day looked like, they would talk about Agile, um, you know, which we didn't have a lot of exposure right. to. Right. Um, and so that like opened up my eyes of like most, of, as John said, like most of these professors had never worked in industry, so they didn't even know what to tell us. But then when we could ask someone who's working in the industry, it just opened up our eyes to like, oh, this is what we want to do for the rest of our lives. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that so before asking uh, the next question, can anyone uh, tell to viewer that if they did not subscribe the channel, it's in YouTube, so you know, we have to tell that one. Right, so, so like, if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, leave like, a comment down below, right, right Mahanish? Below, yeah. <laughs> tell your friends, let them all know. <laughs> share this knowledge, because see, knowledge is the thing that you should not keep with you, you know? Once right. you share, then, then only it will spread. So guys, share this knowledge to everyone, okay? The, yeah, two more question actually. Sananda Kishore Satkute, he is also from Nagpur. He was asking like, sir, I want to ask mostly on which technology American students prepare to work and also tell me about their way and strategy of working. So, I mean, we entered the workforce in 2017, right? <laughs> so this video, this this content, you know, maybe outdated yeah, in a yeah. couple of years. So there is a disclaimer, like you know, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, we can give some disclaimer. Of course, like, this is their experience, right? And during their time, it may be change person to person, and right. you know, generation to generation. Yeah, technology yeah. is fluid. Technology is also, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's so much. Thing. What we learned, you know, in 20 years might be like, oh, that outdated language. Yeah. But I would say yeah. for our. Pitt was a Java school. Yeah. Pitt was primarily a Java based Java. school. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. We learned so, Java. I would like to stop here. So, Java is the language. When I started 20, uh, 2008, uh -huh. from there, from that time also, I learned Java only, and still we are working in Java. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Java we can conclude that Java is a it's a good place now. to yeah. start. Oh yeah, Java is here to stay. I would say. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's what on seventeen now. There's a new release every time. Yeah, twenty one so. is also twenty two. It yeah. just keeps going. Keeps going. Yeah. So Java is a good one. I would Java say. is a good. Java is solid. You can't go wrong. Those skills are going to apply to other languages. I would also say Angular. Mm -hmm. Angular, Angular for front end. Yeah, exactly. That's not something that I learned in school. I don't think we learned that in school. No, no. Uh, we learned that in the industry on the job. But if you come into those skills, you'll be good. And then finally, I think right now what's blowing up is Python. Yeah. Python, yeah. Python is huge for data science and other things. So those are the big three. I don't think they're going anywhere. No, I don't know about no, no. You. But I, I think also too, like once if you pick any one of those, I think you're going to be golden in the industry. But once you learn it well, a good thing to know is just how you can transfer those skills to other languages. Correct. Because you might, you know, be working for a startup that's okay. in Ruby or something, or right. like Rust. Right. All these languages you've never heard of. Like the faster that you can pick up a language and understand how to learn another language quickly, a lot of companies I feel like test you on your knowledge of how to learn. Yeah. Other than on what you've already learned. Right. So if you can, you know, these languages probably won't go away, but if you want to learn a new one, that's right. a really great place to start. It's not about the syntax, it's yeah, not yeah. about how you do things, it's about the principles behind them. Yeah. That are gonna translate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So.
So there was a question actually, but you already answered like Sakshi. <laughs> Sakshi also like she was asking like what technology we need to prepare like in terms of front end, back end, back end. Mm. So I suggest them like for front end you can go with Angular and React also. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, is booming now. Yeah. Yeah. So Angular and React is a front end and back end. They can pick Java or Python. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And in a, in, a, in a query language, if they know like how to write a basic SQL query, yeah. Yeah. I think that's enough for them. Right. SQL goes that. a long way, SQL. for sure. Exactly. And if you take a different flavor of SQL, it's mm -hmm. the same ideas. Same idea. You might just have to look up how to write it differently. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. not a problem at all. Oh, okay. yeah. So we can conclude that if three lang these languages, if you yeah, you know pick up and then so that going forward, like if any new language will come, so it will be easy for them to cope up. Exactly. exactly. And I agree. Go ahead. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, guys. So I think that's all question I have received, and I think this covers pretty much all, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. everything. So do you want to share anything else? I which would you feel that it will help to these students and they can prepare at their early stage, which we miss actually during our stage. There is some. Sure. I would just say that the one piece of advice I would give is I mentioned briefly before, but you know it might feel like you have to know everything. It's yeah. impossible to know everything. Good, good. And, and that's not expected of you when you're entering the, the workforce for the first time. You're going to come in, like Mohanish brought us onto the team. Uh -huh. And he, I remember the first days I was working with Mohanish and he was showing me this and showing me that and still showing me things to this day. <laughs> so they're not going to be put on an island where no one's going to help you. There's going to be other people like us who have been in your shoes just a few years ago that are going to give you that knowledge. But don't feel so pressured to just know every single thing because it's not possible. It's yeah. always changing. Good, good. So just rely on the skills you know, know how to put to work and just know that you're going to find someone like Mahanish on your team that's going to be able to help you out and teach you some stuff that you might not have learned in school. Definitely. I just say, you know, be open to what you're going to be able to work on because I, you know, when I entered the workforce, I would not have expected to be working on what I worked on first. Sure. When I entered the workforce three years ago, I wouldn't have expected to be working on what I work on now. These right. days, I don't even do a ton of programming anymore. I do a lot of like organization, Jira work, mm -hmm. Agile, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I do a lot more database work than I ever thought I would be doing. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot more paperwork than I ever thought I would be doing. Yep. Um, but I love it. You know what I mean? Like, it's still interesting and it's still technology. I'm still working with, you know, um, computers, with programming, right. uh, building software. So, you never know what's going to come next, but there's a lot of fun stuff out there. So I just, if there's an opportunity, jump on it. Don't worry about it. if it's right. going to help you five or ten years down the line. It'll be fun. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah good, good, good. So thank Jonathan and Joseph. And this is really good, actually. You know, you guys spend your weekend. And in my eyes, so I'm sorry, actually, for spoiling your weekend. No, no, no. no. This is so much fun. <laughs> this is good. This is helpful. Yeah. This is helpful. Yeah, so yeah. it's worth it. Oh, yeah. Very, very. So guys, this video is, I think, I think we can... Uh, uh, end up this this session today and we'll see you in another video you know uh, from me i would like to suggest like be a continuous learner because what i saw in these two guys they are a continuous learner they are a hard they are a, they, they break their own own record <laughs> 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 they broke their own record for learning you know yeah that's right that's right that's right yeah. so thanks man thanks right. again best of luck everybody uh, thank, you, thank you i think we can